The Goldman Sachs deal is a very sexy story between two sinners, but the European crisis is not the child of the sex we had with Goldman Sachs. Oh, cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Perhaps as an electorate, we might have all agreed that this is what we want to do. It's just that we were never consulted and we never knew. Greece is teetering on the brink. Poor man of the Eurozone, dependent on the EU for bailout loans, mistrusted by creditors and poised to default. So how did it bring itself to the edge? And how did 2.8 billion euros of debt just disappear into the wind? In 2003, I exposed Greece's attempt with Goldman Sachs to conceal the size of its debt. At that time, the Greek authorities said I was making something out of nothing. So now I've come back to Athens to understand how and why the deal was done. What was the deal's cost to Greece and its profit to Goldman? And why were EU watchdogs insistent that they knew nothing about the deal until 2010? In 2001, as they wrestled with how to qualify for Euro membership, the Greek government questioned how they could kick the habit of the country's debt addiction. In order to join the Euro, Greece had to promise to show directionality. Their debt ratio had to go down every year. With events like the 2004 Olympics coming up, that wouldn't be easy. To the Greek civil servants responsible for the country's finances, an easier solution was at hand. Rather than cut spending and repay debt, why not hide the borrowing instead? Among the bankers who flocked to Athens was Adi Ludiadis, head of fixed income sales at Goldman Sachs. In 2001, Ludiadis came to the table with one of the most important deals of her career. She had found a way to give the Greeks what they were looking for, a way of shrinking their debt that was legal and completely secret. I'm going to meet Christophoros Sardellis, the man tasked by the government of the time with getting Greece's debt moving in the right direction. The deal involves swaps, financial bets used to hedge risks. He says right from the start he wasn't able to disclose the terms of the deal to the market. Hi Nick. Hi. Welcome. If you go to the open market with the securitization trying to sell bonds, you make announcements because you want to attract investors. If you do a bilateral uh, deal with a single bank, you don't make announcements about it. No one did it at that time. Right? I mean, if you look around Europe, nobody announced the swaps they did with uh, every country, counterparty. And that was the tradition. The swap that Goldman offered Greece would shrink the debt using a foreign exchange transaction. In the same way that you or I convert our foreign currency at a bureau de change when we come back from holiday, international borrowers convert their foreign bonds into domestic debt using swaps. Goldman's trick was that they used a fictitious exchange rate in the swaps to make the country's debt appear smaller. In this way, 2.8 billion euros of Greece's debt suddenly disappeared, giving the false impression that Greece was converging with the Maastricht rules. The debt hadn't really disappeared. In reality, Goldman had secretly lent Greece 2.8 billion euros as part of the swap. That money would have to be repaid with interest. In attempting to pay back the money through big interest rate bets, Greece fell even further into debt. A year after I wrote about the deal, the government changed. Sardellis was out of a job, and the new government revealed the spiralling costs of the Goldman deal. The detrimental swap agreements of 2001 led to the vanishing of 2.8 billion euros of debt. The swap agreements had a direct cost of 500 million euros and an indirect cost of 1 billion euros. The new boss of Greece's public debt management agency says the deal ostensibly achieved what the previous government had set out to do. It paid off in the sense that they hide the, 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 this debt, so they were in, were in an agreement with the requirements to be a member of the, of the Eurozone, right? But the cost was exorbitant to begin with. And then when they function, finally they had to come out in the open and, and uh, acknowledge this debt, this debt has ballooned. But a, a big bet. A very big debt. A bad bet. A bad bet. Uh, it turned out in retrospect, yes. 
Papa Nicolaou was frustrated with the terms of the golden deal he inherited. As a result of Sardellis's bets not working out, the loan had mushroomed to 5.1 billion euros. Worse still, Goldman had included tweaks in the deal that seemed to ensure that the dice were loaded against Greece and in favour of Goldman, who were making millions from the deal. We asked Goldman to eliminate this uh, particular feature, which again was not usual in the market, and they refused it. I recommended to write a letter to somebody high up in, the, in uh, Goldman, asking them to get rid of this uh, without any conversation. But they was asked, they cannot do that because some of their traders have already positions, you know. On that, they might even lose money. He sympathises with the position his predecessor was in. He was ripped off by Goldman, but again, I don't blame him, all right? Let me make up a bit clear, I don't blame him. Because in end, he was scared that he could not go to the market and check, and he was asked by, by, the, by the government to do that. You might wonder how such a deal could possibly be allowed, but it was perfectly legal. Goldman wanted to be sure that it wouldn't get into trouble for helping the Greeks with such a barefaced trick. So the company says it spoke to the EU accounting agency Eurostat about the deal and has provided Newsnight with an email proving that the discussions took place. We asked Eurostat for an interview, but they declined and issued a statement to us. We would like to confirm that we became aware of the Greek off-market transactions only at the beginning of 2010. Greek authorities had never informed Eurostat about this complex issue and that no opinion on the accounting treatment had been requested from Eurostat. It is possible that Goldman Sachs asked us for general clarifications, and this is our interpretation of the email. For many, questions remain. Why wasn't Eurostat looking out for Greece in the interest of the EU as a whole? The deal was well known in the market, and among Greek politicians too. How could Eurostat stay blissfully unaware until 2010? Even Greeks themselves were trying to warn about their country's dodgy statistics. In 2005, we wrote a detailed letter to Eurostat, uh, effectively dobbing in our government at the time for what they were doing in fiddling the infamous Greek statistics. Three months later, we got a letter back from, from Eurostat saying they investigate everything, is completely above board, so we better shut up. The 5.7 billion euros now owed under the Goldman swap is only a small piece of the 350 billion euros that Greece owes today only a fraction of which will ever be repaid. But that 5.7 billion symbolises the twisted incentives at the heart of the euro. Incentives for Greece to fiddle debts, incentives for bankers to cook up deals, and incentives for Brussels institutions to look the other way. If you put me back to 2001, and I say, will you do this again? I would say, no, not because of the economics behind it, Probably I will design a little bit uh, differently if I know that uh, September 11 will happen, etc. But I would never do this type of business because of the political risks, the political handling of this type of transactions afterwards. Newsnight approached Goldman Sachs for an interview, but they declined. In a statement, they told us... Greece was already part of the Eurozone when it entered into the swaps. Greece actually executed the swap transactions to reduce its debt to GDP ratio because all member states were required by the Maastricht Treaty to show an improvement in their public finances. The swaps are one of several techniques that many European governments use to meet the terms of the treaty. The swaps we executed for Greece were done in accordance with Eurostat rules. In Athens today, the legacy of utopian financial experiments is an unstable, angry society reeling from four years of recession with no end in sight. The Greeks who implemented and analysed these transactions now agree that they were a toxic import that played on the country's weaknesses, hastening its downfall. As with subprime in the US, investment bankers played on these weaknesses for profit. The Brussels institutions that were supposed to protect the Eurozone failed catastrophically, and they failed the Greeks too. Oh yeah. Greece is poised to default on its debts and leave the Eurozone. Germany and EU institutions expressed outrage at how the Greeks cheated their way to disaster. That's hypocrisy. Back in 2003, the story of how legalised financial trickery was rotting the Eurozone from the inside wasn't something the guardians of the Euro wanted to hear, so they ignored it. It's tempting to ask whether a single currency held together with such toxic glue is actually worth saving. So I ran to the Lord.